million. And the problem is, is that I believe that Woolies and Entertainment UK use the same banking system. And thus, if we had had our own banking system, we probably wouldn't be in this trouble. You know, same as uh, I think, uh, is it Bertrams isn't in this trouble, and Two Entertainers isn't in this trouble because they've got their own banking systems. I believe that we might have been 60 to 100 million. Once Zavi paid us that 60 million, it would only been 40 million. As long as we had a strong peak, we would have sailed through, and I believe we probably could have kept through. We could have sold one site or any, any and reduced the staff. There would have been a number of ways we could have made that money up. But the problem was we had a joint bank account with Woolies, and I don't know why that was allowed to happen. I suspect because Woolies bought Entertainment UK uh, through the demerger with Kingfisher that they wanted the same banking system because at the end of the day we were the profitable company. Woolies never made profit, only very slightly at Christmas, and that just kept them afloat. Basically that was all that was happening. We were the ones making the profit, and I suspect they wanted us to have a joint bank account because it meant that Woolies could use our strong bank account as it were, our strong, you know, profitable side to get lots of loans over these periods of peak and stuff like that when they needed the big money. That's when you need to get money from banks to get all the stock. And I suspect that that's why Woolies kept uh, the account with uh, Entertainment UK, almost like a parasite. That's not a very nice simile, but it's basically the truth. I believe that's, I'm, I'm sure that's the reason why. I mean, I don't know, but that seems to suggest at the end of the day, Woolies never made a profit. So if you were a, a person who couldn't make profit, then you're not going to be able to fight. You're not going to have a very strong position of getting money from the bank, are you? Whereas if you have a joint bank with someone who's really strong, you know, if you've got a man who makes lots of money and you've got a man who doesn't make lots of money, the man who doesn't make lots, lots of money, who makes deficit, is going to find it very difficult to get stuff from the bank. The man who makes lots of money is going to find it very easy. So if you join them together, then both can use the same account. They don't know it's this one, it's this one, it's the, both the same. So they both enjoy because this one's making so much profit. I believe that was probably why. And that was, you know, we were allowed to sink, basically. We were taken down. Um, although, yes, we did have our own problems, but we would have been able to survive those because obviously we were owed 60 million by Zavi, which I believe has been paid. So if we did only have a, a 60 million uh, minus, then we would have been straight. If it was 100 million, it was only 40 million, and we would have been able to get that through Strong Peak and through other various means. That's like the management side of it. This administration, though, it has been interesting. Um, you know, in those two weeks, it is amazing to think that we were really busy, and um, it is amazing to think that the, the warehouse that I've spent eight years in, that, you know, it was, it was, to me it was like a home, and it was my first real job, and the memories there, the people, that was the main thing, the people, and that is the thing that I will miss the most because, you know, I like the place, I like the work, I gave my heart to that place. I know a lot of people used to make fun, you know, as people do at work, you know, because if I might be sick or something, or, you know, the laid back approach that I have, that's just my approach. But at the end of the day, I always did uh, whatever I could for that company, and I, I did give them my heart. It, if I could do, you know, I'd run about, I, I enjoyed the fact that things got done, you know, I wanted things to get done, I wouldn't try and find easy ways out of things or stuff like that, I, I, I wanted the company to survive, yeah, I know, I chatted with people and I made them laugh and whatever and I had laughs with them and whatever and there were periods where, but whatever I did, I did more than whatever um, of my lackadaisical, if you want, uh, moments there. And that was a great thing about the company. Um, there was a lot of freedom to, to breathe. Um, and the people there were, they were the nicest people you could meet. There was a real, that was the, the atmosphere. And that, that we really saw when the, we, we went into administration, the way that people pulled together and the way that we had so much fun. I mean, we were cleaning stuff for weeks. For the first week, we was just cleaning the warehouse because we weren't allowed to send anything out. Then we had to run sorters where I'd worked, and that, that's the place I considered my home. That's where all the stock goes into the boxes and stuff like that, and special services where I was last. Um, and the, us, the team pulling together was the most interesting thing because that showed you how close we were. Um, devoid of the agency, and that was another sad thing that um, that they were the first to get hit, obviously. Um, and when we were all together, the laughs we had just showed how much of a team we were, and it would have been really nice to have pulled it off and to have saved the company. 
Um, and that's what we all wanted. And when the administration closed that door, as it were, there was a lot of tears and a lot of sadness and a lot of anger over um, you know, what had happened. Because everyone knew that it was a bad situation, but we all felt that how could a profitable company, a billion pound turnover profitable company, go down? when it, it seemed to be, you know, and that, that's the strange thing, when that happened, when they gave that message, and we were all basically made redundant, 700 of us, and then to go back to the area where I worked, special services, and to see the sorters and the whole area completely quiet, completely still, and to take that, that last look around that area where every single day for eight years of my working life I've been, it is like a home. I can see if I, even now I'm thinking, I can see that area in my head, the, where the tables are, the shelves, the equipment, everything, and all the different areas, and it is really quite sad. And I know that in the next few days I will feel that a lot more, because that familiarity that you have, it, it's like losing a friend. You know, you the loss happens and then you start to remember the moments you start to feel the de the void of not of not going to that place uh, and not being in those surroundings and not being those people and that that's another thing for me you know i don't um, you know, i'm i'm quite a shy person and the only real friends i have are those friends at work and that is the big thing that i will miss that those people that you know i spend days, you know, hours with, you know, that you spend working and, and helping and being with those I will miss the most. And I know, you know, I've had a lot of friends in the past that at school, and this is probably why I find it difficult to make friends in a way, is that when I was at school, you know, friends would be there and then they would just leave me or they would go, there was one who went to a different place, whatever, there's like that. I probably told this story somewhere else. And it really hurts, and this just feels like that, because I know that, yeah, they're still friends, and I know we will share conversations and we maybe even meet up, but it, it won't be the same. It will never be the same, because we used to spend every single day together, and we used to joke and laugh, and, you know, things were hectic and getting things done, and in the special services, which I was in for last year with Lance and Richard, that was the, the the happiest time. I mean, I know I loved the time on sorters when I was on sorters. I did love that time. And, you know, I found that really good, especially, you know, controlling the work and stuff like that when it came out. And I felt, you know, because people often give me a lot of respect there, I don't know why, but they do. And I felt so high up because of the way they made me feel. That was brilliant. And I, and I really loved that area. But with special services, with Lance and Richard, the you know, doing swap and things like that, getting uh, the, the, the plastic sleeves out for that they put in stores. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was such a mundane thing, but getting it done, you know, and the, the laughs we used to have and the jokes, I mean, those things, I know I will think about that a lot. I can't help it. I've already, you know, when I'm on my own, I, I start to think about those times. I start to think of the different people I've known and the moments and it, does really make you sad and it's something you can't control it is it, it's like I often write in my poems about love you know it's um, fragile it, it, it can be there and then it can just be gone just like that and when it's gone just like that there's nothing you can do nothing nothing you can do to make it happen again there's no you know we're never all going to work together in our lives again and we won't share those same moments they're, they're already gone and that is the, the, the sad thing about this. It wasn't just a workplace. It was like, like a home in a way with, with the way people were. And I know people are thinking I'm over sentimentalizing what this workplace was like, but it, it, it did have that feeling to it. And I will miss that most of all, the, my friends there and the way we work together. And I don't know whether I'm ever gonna feel that again um, just the camaraderie and, and the, the, the fun we had. And it's very unusual to be in a workplace where you can say that, where you actually had fun.